Hello everybody, my name is Binks and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about stable diffusion and a photorealistic workflow that I've been experimenting with over the past couple of days. I think you guys are going to love the results. Um, this video is going to be less of kind of a tutorial. I will be showing you all the settings like always and down in the comment section will be a copy and paste for all the for the prompt and the negative prompt. Um, but outside of that, we're just kind of going to experiment a little bit and I'll show you a couple of things that you can do. If you're ever confused about any of the things that I'm doing in this video, I have a link up in the top right with a playlist of all of my stable diffusion videos. So go feel free to check that out. Subscribe, comment, like for more and let's get right into it. So one of the first things I've been changing up over the past couple of days with my stable diffusion prompts is I've gone from less of a keyword approach and more towards something that would be closer to a large language model. I've been messing a lot with uh, GPT-3 and ChatGPT um, from OpenAI and that's been a lot of fun. So similar to how those sort of prompts and text completion works, I wanted to take something that was more of an English structured sentence into stable diffusion and see how it did. And I've actually been getting some really great results from that. Um, I can also go ahead and paste in a negative prompt here. So I'll just go ahead and throw that in there real quick. We're going to use the DPM plus plus SD care sampler because that is my favorite as everybody knows. Um, always turn our batch count up to two. If you know, you know. Uh, width is going to be 768 by 768, just a little bit higher res than what is considered normal. A convict scale of 7 is fine for me. I'm going to make sure to check restore faces and go ahead and generate. All right, so our images are finished and before we even say anything else about them, they're obviously stunning and you might be wondering, Binks, can I just load up whatever version of Stable Diffusion, 1.4, 1.5, 2.1 and do this? No, uh, sadly not. You would have to download this model that I'm using today, which is Realistic Vision version 1.2. Link will be down in the description. It's from Civit AI. Um, a couple of words of warning though, uh, just be careful there is NSFW content on the site and if that's not what you're looking for then um, it can be kind of in your face and uh, you can you can disable all of it but like I said it's it's a little it's a little forward. Um, big shout out to SG161222, you're the best. This uh, 1.1 and 1.2 models have both been great and there's a lot of inspiration here um, on this site if you guys are interested. It's a 3.8 gig download, not too, too shabby, considering some of the bigger models are closer to seven to 10 gigabytes. So uh, for what it does, it is really great. There's a couple, the, the only con that I've found so far is that it likes to generate similar faces, um, even particularly when you do an image to image with too high of a denoising strength. If you give it too much freedom, it really likes to drift away from the original subject and kind of head towards one of its training images. Um, I think that could be solved in future updates. So just keep an eye out for this page. And um, if there's ever an update, I'll probably do a video on it as well. Okay, so let's get back into Stable Diffusion here. As you can see, these results are absolutely astonishing. They're great. Um, and right here, just off the bat, we could send any of these over to an upscaler and you know go from there. But what I wanna do is kinda learn a little bit more about realistic vision and the way that it ticks. So we're gonna start modifying these prompts a little bit. The negative prompt seems to have done its job rather well. I don't see any really obvious. There's maybe a weird thing with the eyes here, but that might be a perspective shift thing. Um, honestly, these images are great. So I'm just gonna change this prompt up a bit. Okay, so I've just kind of switched the prompt around um, a man, brown haired man with striking features, short beard, scars on his face, gruff expression, just kind of a complete different thing. And we're, we're going to let this run and I'll kind of show you how versatile this this model is. All right, and there we go. We've generated two more images, this time of a male. It seems like we've got either once it's trying to do a tattoo or maybe hair, uh, but you know, cropping up on that neckline would probably be better. And then the left variant is also very nice. Um, not exactly what I was looking for though. I think I would uh, delete this last line and let that rip again. And 
and there we go we got two more results that i think are great i've actually been using ai a lot for my world building i do like hobbyist world building and i'm designing a medieval fantasy world for a game that i'm working on as well um, and this ai has been great for inspiration so i just kind of wanted to show you guys a couple of things you can do to keep having fun with ai don't don't get discouraged with stable diffusion it does take a little bit more time to get used to and kind of understand but i'm going to keep the content coming if you haven't seen all my other videos on it please take a look at those i've had a lot of people say that they've been extremely useful for them and if you guys have any questions at all make sure you leave a comment down below uh, like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching